Hi there, welcome to this course on data science and analytics with AWS QuickSight. My name is Arshit and I'm an instructor for this class. Here in this class, you're going to learn about data preparation and visualization on Amazon QuickSight. Here in this course, you're going to learn about importing a data set on the cloud. You would also learn to perform data cleaning and other operations that is required for data preparation. You will learn to remove certain rows and columns based on a condition by using filters. You will learn to create filters. Uh, you will learn to create calculated fields. Calculated field would allow you to create custom columns that are not available on data set. After that, when you are complete data preparation phase, you will learn to create visualization charts such as bar chart, pie chart, map chart to advanced charts such as pivot table and Sankey charts and much more. You would also learn to customize these charts and analytics dashboard to drive insights from the data set and present them in visually meaningful way. So if you are curious to learn these data preparation and visualization skills on AWS QuickSight, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hey friend, welcome to this lesson where you are going to learn about getting started with AWS QuickSight. So let's start with this. Uh, on the AWS panel, uh, just move to the services panel or you can just search QuickSight in this option. So there are a multitude of services on AWS and we just need to navigate to QuickSight. So QuickSight will allow you to create different kinds of visualization charts and do a lot of data preparation and complete data science work on the cloud. So let's sign in for QuickSight. You have to sign in for QuickSight with a separate account. So you have created an AWS account. It would not uh, automatically log in into the QuickSight. So you may choose the option for the beginners and the learners. It is better to go for the standard edition. It will be free. So you can choose this thing uh, for getting started. You need uh, some kind of authentication method. Uh, you would require IAM identity and access management federated identity so just keep the default options intact and you just need to provide quicksight account name so just provide a account name here you can provide any information and you have to provide the email id for notification and other things you can allow access to different kinds of services on cloud uh, it could be amazon redshift you can choose RDS, S3, IAM we have already selected. So for those who don't know what is IAM, so IAM is an authentication uh, service that is provided on AWS. So whenever you create some service or service instance on the cloud, you need an IAM role or policy attached to that thing. So you could have multiple members of the team working on your project side by side. So it could be a corporate project where you could require this thing for business analyst and data science projects and other so on. So you can uh, have a team here. You can also select S3 bucket if you want to store some data or you can fetch it, but you can add it on later on. It's not required at the moment. So just keep the default things here. And once you're done, just hit the finish button to get started with this thing. If there is some error, just go back and just revert it to default settings if you find you can change the region i'm using north virginia us east you can choose any option so you have to make sure that your account name for the quick site must match with the format uh, there's no underscore supported or special characters are very limited use so only hyphen is allowed here so you can use this thing so once it is created, you can log into QuickSight through AWS. Earlier QuickSight was a different corporation, different product that was acquired by Amazon or AWS. And that's why we find this thing. It is very advanced software where you can create uh, a lot of things, data visualization charts to be very complex for finding insights, critical insights that you're learning in the coming lessons. So don't worry for this. So you have to just go to the quick site. Uh, you can consider this lesson as an installation part. 
but actually it is not an installation you just need to configure a few basic things uh, before navigating through this thing so here you can go to the quick site account and you can simply log in it will take only this much time for if you are doing it for the first time so once you are done it will automatically just move it to there you can just explore some few of the basic informations that is there otherwise just ignore it you will also learn this thing so here this is the primary dashboard for quick site here you got multiple options on the left hand side you got different kinds of categories and you got uh, the analysis that has been created these are the four analysis that has been created by default for you to understand how things work uh, once you select any one of them it will create a visualization dashboard uh, where you have all the options here uh, it has created six seven eight eight different kind of charts the pie chart stack bar charts and different line charts and other kind of charts and you will learn to navigate this thing so there, there are a lot of options here you can con configure or customize a lot of things here uh, for finding critical insights from the data set so you are learning how to upload a data set how to prepare a data set for data preparation and sorting this thing data modeling that is an important part of data science you will also learn to create a lot of visualization charts and drive some insights from these things amazing visualization chart and you can also download this thing on pdf and share with your peers and teammates you can allow other various kind of data sources like uh, s3 or you can upload some file in format of csv or excel you can link with a cloud database like redshift or traditional database like sql and different things here so this will be a complete data science project you can create a lot of things business intelligence data science data visualization a lot of things with quick sight so keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about importing a data set or uploading a data set on aws quick sight and you will learn to create your first bi report and visualization charts using quick sight so let's start with this so this is our default dashboard when you log into quick sight uh, you got few default visualization dashboards already created for you to analyze and now it's time to upload something here so just choose a new analysis and you have to create a new data set so let's create a data set here you can see there are various options that you can use to import data set on quick sight you can use the s3 bucket you can have the oracle uh, sql server aurora db maria db you can also fetch data set from github twitter or different platforms okay so there's a wide range of options you can use it uh, using aws services or you can use the custom services so for now we are just uploading a file uh, that is generally a csv or you can upload an excel file so just upload and select the worksheet name and you can hit select to create a visualization chart so this is how uh, we get uh, some data here you can you get uh, two different options one you can edit or preview data and then you can visualize so let us first visualize it so when you create the visualize option you will get this visualization dashboard created for you and here we can create multiple charts we can add it uh, you can duplicate different kind of charts you can create a lot of charts here uh, such as pie chart ring chart tree map line stack uh, map chart or a different kind of charts the got charts that can be used for a lot of purposes so for creating a chart we need to drop different kind of fields into the group or the value option so let us drop product into the group and price into the value so what is value type value that is represented using green color uh, will show you the measure or numerical values and the group is generally and the alphabetic values uh, that is generally noun names of the place categories and such things okay so if you have some numerical value it could show you the sum of values uh, various kinds of aggregation could be there some average count 
count distinct mean median mode such things you can show by default it is set to sum so once you put any field into the value option it will take the sum of the column and will show you on the screen or uh, with a help of chart so this is how it creates as this service is on cloud and it may take a few time few moment for creating a few charts so in the meanwhile we can create some more charts here so let us create a bar chart here we will drop uh, the same options here so this is pie chart has been created here we have four different categories of the product milk bread grapes and oranges and that has been shown into the pie chart and we have the bar chart also ready and this is how you create different kinds of visualization charts in quick sight so try to create this thing on error keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a tree map chart in quick sight and you will also learn to customize or edit some existing charts so let's start with this so we have created two different charts uh, one is a pie chart and another is a bar chart you can create a duplicate of any of these chart and remove the values or you can create a new chart from fresh so here just uh, try to create some new chart uh, you can you choose from various types of options that are there um, for tree map just click uh, on the tree map option and here just add some values so here we add date into the group by category uh, it is a date field so it won't be a number and then we add a margin into size and price into the color so we have three different parameters into the tree map so the size of the tree map entities would be defi defined by a margin and uh, color would be derived from price so brighter the color and uh, softer the color they will be monotonous you will see it will load in a few moment in the meanwhile you can customize other charts as well so if you have multiple charts on the dashboard you may try to customize things accordingly so here on the pie chart we have some values we can see the milk product uh, milk and different products here oranges grapes so let us align them so oranges and the orange color it is uh, orange is currently shown in the green color okay so we want to convert this orange pie into the orange color we can change the values by just right clicking the chart and you can select the color of individual parameter individual category so let's change the color of milk and we can change to a different data colors there are a lot of options you can choose from so this is not a vital step for data visualization you have already created a visualization but uh, visually if you are presenting anything visually it has to do with colors so choosing a right color appropriate color uh, regarding your business intelligence and what insights you are driving is important okay so if you are showing some results for the sales result the profit could be shown in green color loss could be shown in the red color this is a well-known figure everybody uses so you can turn it into that colors if you have kpis and other things as well and these are all things so you can customize and once you're done you may get uh, some different charts loaded on the right hand side we also have some categories uh, say for example here we have four different categories for the horizontal bar charts uh, you can choose colors in a different way say if you have four categories you can choose four different colors for each of them or you can use a single color as it is shown here or you may to, if you want to highlight a particular category you can paint it in a different color say here we have four different category if you want to change the color of milk you can change it okay so now we have this tree map chart displayed it has been processed and here it is you can export this thing in pdf and download it that we can view later on and uh, you can always go back to the dashboard panel in the quick site uh, when you log into quick site and here we have different projects so just go to the grocery repository one that we have created here report here 
and here we got three different columns so as said for the tree map chart we can find these things okay so here we can have downloaded the PDF so first you have to export your report into PDF and then you can download it and you can view it using any visual editor and so on so you can use it on a different platform as well you can share it offline if you want to drive some critical insights you can share it with your teammates and anything else like projections planning for the future driving some insights this thing can be combined and published on a various formats on a magazine so booklets research papers anywhere if you want to use it okay so visualization is not just part for uh, a business or a company it can be used by entrepreneurs freelancers anyone for personal finance well, variety of things okay so here we have created these things so try to create these charts and customize them keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about data preparation where you would be able to customize your data set not your charts data set so you would be able to edit your data set change values create calculated fields and a lot of things that is there so for data science data modeling and data preparation is a crucial step so quicksight also empower you to prepare your data so for that purpose you do just need to load your data set uh, either via csv by uploading a file or you can use any of the available connectors s3 athena rds redshift anything and here you got two options the first option was to visualize after you hit the select option the second option on the left hand side is edit and preview data so earlier we selected the select option and visualize now we just need to go with the edit option so once you hit the edit option it will create a different kind of dashboard it is not a dashboard for creating charts it will show you the entire data set here uh, in different columns and rows as you can find in the excel file format and on the left hand side you got multiple options on the top side you have option for calculated field uh, click here to create a calculated field so what is a calculated field so you will learn it in detail in the coming lessons but for now just uh, get it a calculated field uh, is a new column that you create in your table it is based on a formula okay say you can create a number of rows serial number you can add some value subtract some value perform various options here next there is a filter so filter will allow you to customize the data set and view it here so if you have say thousand of rows and you just want to show five rows so you can show this thing okay you can find a specific value here you can drill into the data set so you can decide here what kind of data will go to the visualization phase and what will be cleaned out so this is also called as a data cleaning this step data preparation is also called as a data cleaning so here uh, we can customize it based on the serial number don't worry uh, you will also learn about filters creating filters in the coming lessons so this is just a quick recap here so here uh, you can select various options there are various options say you can say the greater or equal value you can define based on the number say here we have serial number one two various number of rows say hundred of rows and if you want to show say row number 5 to 10 or 4 to 8 it could be displayed here so you have to define the minimum value and the maximum value of the serial number in the same way if you say have a data for different persons record you can decide um, on the age criteria 18 to 35 36 to 48 and so on different age category you can classify people in age category you can also create filters like male and female geography for the country city anything based on the product anything say so you can filter out data so this is how you can do this thing and more you can customize more information here we are using a single sheet you can use multiple spreadsheet and create a connection in here as you can see in the data panel we have got only sheet one you could have multiple sheets and you can combine them together 
to create a joins as you use in the SQL table. People who have a background in database, they will understand it. You can create joins and such things. So it could be useful for advanced scenarios. And for right now, we can also change the data type of the field. So here we have multiple columns, say price. We can change it from decimal to integer, integer to decimal and so on. Sometimes uh, say things like if you have the country information or city information, these are the location, geographical locations and they have been maybe due to some error, they could be defined as a string. So you can change the value. If you customize it to country specific, it will know what that it is a country. And when you want to create a geographical chart, it would be very easy for you to create this thing. It will automatically detect. Okay. So after you are done with this, you can hit the visualization option on the right hand side. Uh, you can save and create a visualization chart. As you already know how to create a visualization chart, it will have a different dashboard. So in quick sight, you have two different kind of dashboards. One for data preparation, modeling, data cleaning, and one for creating visualization chart. Sometimes if you have a very small chunk of data for practice purpose, you can directly go to the visualization step or in general professionals use to first prepare and then visualize. So on the cloud, if you're working on a, some decent project, you may be having a, a good amount of people on your team. So some people would be focused on creating a data preparation level modeling and some would be deployed on creating visualization chart driving insights. So you could have some role in between or you could be having managing all these things. Okay. And you could have multiple reports, multiple visualizations. So multiple people could be deployed on a different level. So that is how yeah, your work would be done on the cloud. The data science projects is done here. So try to create these things on your own. Explore data preparation, create visualization charts in QuickSight. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating a calculated field in QuickSight. So let's start with this. In the earlier lesson, you learned how to do data preparation, how data preparation works and various options there. Uh, in this lesson, we will be focused on creating a calculated field. So just have some data set or create a new analysis. And here we will learn different kind of functions that you can use to create a different column. So calculated field is simply a custom column or a new column that you want to create that is not there in your data set or table. And it could be based on a certain formula that is mathematical formula, or it could be based derived from different columns. So here we have multiple columns here and we can take a few of them. So here we have a profit column a product category, product ID, product name, different uh, options in here and here just go to add calculated field and this will direct to this option. You can directly write the code for creating a calculated field. It will be a simple one line code or you can use different functions that are available here. So here we will be using ceiling function. So seal, C E I L would be routine to calculate the ceiling of a function. So here we use the profit and we will create a ceiling of profit. So just for example, there is a ceiling and floor, two mathematical functions. See here, if you have a decimal value or value say, it will round off it. So ceiling will round off to the upper threshold while floor will round off to lower threshold. Say here, if you have 72 as value, upper threshold could be 75 and lower threshold could be 70. If you write ceiling, it will convert to upper threshold. Okay. So here we can have, you can add something like here ceiling plus one. You can add one subtract. You can use various operations as you like. You can divide one column with a different column. So it will perform actions on the row basis. So it will go on an individual row compare the values in two different columns and will perform actions. So here just create some real values. So in our data set, we have the values for profit. And if you want to calculate taxes for from the profit values, you can just write a code for that. So here just calculate the ceiling function. 
and here just assume we have a tax rate of 10 percent so it will calculate the taxation from the profit so it will show you okay so it will create a new column you can provide the name of this column tax from profit and just write the code ceiling profit divided by 10 so here uh, this is sometimes there could be some error for you uh, so you have to just check the, the format of this thing you have to put the column name into the parenthesis the function using braces and so on there is no need for any semicolon in here uh, this is not a programming language this is very simple so don't worry if you don't have a background in computer programming it would be easy for you if you're a business person or a business analyst purpose uh, and you don't know the programming it would be fine you just need to understand what these functions would do okay so here just try to do one more thing uh, we learned how to do operations on a measure or a numerical value and let's learn how to do it on a dimension so here we are using the concat function so concat will concatenate or combine multiple strings together so what are the strings here we have two different columns product id product category and product name we have three different columns in here uh, product id is numerical alphabetic and product category is alphabetic string and product name is a string so we can combine these three things together into a single column so this is generally a useless thing but i will show you how to do this thing okay so just write concat function within the parenthesis just provide the name of individual columns or the field you can say and hit the save button so this is how you have to provide this thing if you want to combine multiple columns you can combine them together okay so just explore various functions that are there and these function will be compatible enough to uh, allow you to do a lot of data preparation data cleaning and data modeling on the data set okay so it will be compatible with different things so here just write this thing we have created this thing once you're done hit the save option it will be reflected just back to your quick side dashboard here on the right hand side we got this product info and it show the value of these things combined so currently the space is less so it won't be displayed here but if you create a chart or you can expand it to find the information in there you could create more things like if you want to extract name from the email address you could do this thing and you want to combine these things so try to perform various uh, operations here create calculated fields and quick sight keep learning and keep moving ahead now moving forward by creating some more calculated fields you can hit the three dots uh, to delete a field you can edit them uh, customize the code here and the functions that we can use or you can create a new column from scratch so three things covered you can create a new column you can edit a different existing column you can delete a column okay so this will empower your things uh, in the data cleaning and data preparation phase so just hit to add calculated field option here we are going to create uh, two different columns uh, profit per unit and price per unit so just name this new column as profit per unit and we're using the ceiling function you can use a different function if you want to calculate the average or a different value you can use you can count you can do a different operations based on your data set and requirement so here just write a simple code seal uh, would be used for ceiling function uh, in the bracket put different values here we put profit that is divided by order quantity or divide you use the slash so it will be represented and here we got uh, this column you can calculate on the right hand side profit per unit so we got profit and we got unit these two columns are there the unit sold uh, order quantity simply we divide the order quantity by the profit so it will fetch the profit per unit so you can calculate these things that can be used for your visualization fees to make things very easy so for a person who is creating visualization chart need not to do these things and if you are responsible solely for all the things 
this is a step where you have to prepare your data so you can it would be not very difficult you can prepare your data as well as visualize you should learn both of these things it may depend on your job role so you can focus on a particular thing professionally while you should have a knowledge of both these things so here we can create a, a similar function for calculating the price per unit so here we will divide the total price by order quantity you can calculate age of a person you can use a different formula for creating a different kind of calculated field you get it how to create a calculated field in quick sight uh, using few, few simple steps and based on different columns you can create a visualization charts you can also add some filters that you will learn later on that can be added uh, to improvise the data that you want to show in the chart sometimes you don't want some garbage values and some excess amount of data you want to focus filters would be for that use so stay motivated keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here this lesson you're going to learn about creating filters and exclude a list in a ws quick site so let's start with this so here we have our data set as you can see on the right hand side we have the complete columns and rows information and on the left hand side we have various options to customize our data set to prepare our data set or uh, to perform various options moderations so here so we just need to select a field or column to convert it into the excluded field so just select anything here we, we will select a invoice number and we want some more options so just click uh, triple dots to expand and here you have to select the exclude field option so once you hit this exclude field option it will be converted into the excluded field so this column won't be displayed into the data set and if you save and go to the visualization step this uh, column won't be available so it will aggregate your column it would uh, optimize the storage space and sometimes you in your data set if it is very large you want to remove certain things you can do so next is uh, filters filters allow you to customize various things so here we have selected you can convert anything to filter in the same way you do excluded field so here we have selected the country filter and here we have two options either we can include a certain certain thing in the list or we can exclude so first uh, just select with the include or you can select exclude so here we want to include canada into the country field so once you select this thing it will only display the records that have canada in the country field okay not other countries would be included and if you choose to exclude it it will show all other data that don't have canada in the country field so you can apply this condition definitely you can add multiple excluded fields and multiple filters in your quick site data preparation step you can create a lot of them to fine grade your things you can refine your data set and make it suitable so that it can be used to create proper and uh, useful business insights or visualization charts next uh, we can have date information as well so here we have selected order date that consists of information for the date and here we got three different options we can select the between after and before so when you select the between you have to select the range of values starting and end date uh, it will only show the records that are just between the starting and end date you may choose to select uh, either select or deselect the starting and end date if you check down that thing so it would be it would include the starting date or otherwise it could be excluding it you may define this uh, date field based on the calendar it would be easy for you and just hit apply if you want to select say if we have say records and we want to show the records from 1st september uh, 2016 based on the time we can also find it with the time granularity 
we can select it to second minute hour and time basis different basis if you have a milli second time information you can also add it but it's not generally used so for default it is there then uh, you may choose to select a date afterwards so in that case you have to just select a date after which the record will be displayed a starting date you have to define otherwise if you select the before you have to decide the end date and the same way you can have it inclusive or exclusive set so you may select a checkbox or deselect a checkbox for including a start or end date based on your requirement so this is how we can customize our data set using filters and excluded list uh, we can have multiple kind of filters in the same way you could add them you could remove them and once you are done just hit the save and visualize option on the top right side and it will go to the visualization panel don't forget to hit the apply option uh, so that it will be reflected back to your data set and it could be used here you could add more filters we have multiple column field here if you have a large amount of data set that has multiple columns you can use you can also create a different calculated fields and you can also use those calculated fields as a filter as anything else okay say for example if you have age information you know uh, the date of birth of various peoples uh, that are there in the record uh, you may find the age you can create a calculated field that will calculate the age based on the date of birth and the current date it will subtract find a difference it will create a new column that will have records for that thing and you can use it as a filter so this kind of things can be done here here we select a, a different uh, filter product name and you can pass on multiple values in the list say if you want to show values like including sanitizer and earphones into the product name you may want to select earlier we used canada as an example we selected only one country name for including and excluding and here we can select multiple options as well so it is a list you have to just hit enter each time you have to write each different category name one by one in different lines so this is how it works and just do it uh, keep learning and keep moving ahead stay motivated hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating map charts in aws quick site so let's start with this so we have opened the data set and we have created multiple filters and excluded list so before heading towards visualization panel uh, let us customize some filters you may add or delete a filter or you can edit them based on the requirement for now let me just disable the product name filter and order date if you want to keep or you can change the date range based on your requirement so here you can customize your filters before heading towards a visualization panel it will be best practice to just look at the filters and excluded list or calculated field that you have created before getting into the visualization option so in that case you will have a picture about your data so you can clarify what you want to visualize and once you're done just hit save and visualize and here we got this visualization dashboard where we can create multiple kind of charts here we are going to create a bar chart and a map chart so where there are various visual types as you can find here and based on the different fields and the columns from the data set we can create different charts so here we take uh, two values country and profit country is a dimension that has alphabetic information name of the country and profit is a measure that have a numerical value that can be aggregated based on the sum average and such on if you want to create a map chart just click on the one of these map field uh, you can select this thing you can click on the globe icon or the map icon so i'm taking the area map and here uh, it shows north america and here we have our country's information based on the canada and usa so these two countries are highlighted the rest of the countries are not highlighted because they are not in our data set right now 
so that's it you can customize it you can apply conditional formatting by going to the more details option three dots you can format these things so just go to conditional formatting option here we can format something based on the parameter here we take the profit measure and we change the background color and we can customize the property by default it is showing the information in dark and light blue color you can change the value of colors so here just select a condition like greater than and provide some value change the color to red uh, and here we provided zero value try to apply hit and here it is so any country that has a value of profit more than zero would be converted to red so in this case Canada and USA both have some information and thus both are converted to red but what happens if we want to divide them based on the certain range you can do so okay so once we put some range here like 30,000 uh, then it changed so as you can see here uh, we got more profit from USA compared to Canada the profit is generated for the same this data set and here if you have multiple countries you can choose to go with them otherwise if you want to choose a gradient you can use some kind of gradient if you like otherwise if you have multiple values you can just choose a range and the condition could be greater than greater than equals to less than less than equals to equals or between certain range you can provide this thing and once you provide this range your things would be colored if you want to remove this condition you can simply clear it or close you can add multiple conditions like else would be conditioned so it works like an if else loop people who have a background in computer programming would understand it very clearly uh, here we have if else condition if the first condition is found to be true it will apply the color that is field otherwise if first condition is not true then it will check the second condition and if second condition is satisfied it will change the color otherwise it will go on further so here it is so we got one condition that we have added to this map chart you can create uh, multiple kinds of map charts and once we hover around our map country it will show some information in the tooltip you could add some more information in the tooltip as well you can duplicate you can hit actions you can find various options in here and if you want to customize the theme the layout of your dashboard on the right hand side you got multiple options like visualize filter parameters theme actions just go to the themes and here just select the midnight theme it will convert to the dark theme you can choose a brighter color there are four or five by default themes that you can go with so if you feel like uh, power saving or you want to have some dark kind of theme you can use it so here we have this thing a uh, dark theme and we can change the color of individual bars based on the selection and here it is so it's better to change the color of bar uh, that matches with the map so here Canada is changed to magenta or pink color and US is shown in blue color so you can clearly identify in both charts. there's a color harmony between multiple charts so if you're tra trying to create a dashboard and report try to implement this color harmony multiple charts having same values should be categorized in similar colors so keep learning and keep moving ahead stay motivated hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating pivot tables in quick sight so let's start with this when you have uh, a large set of data and you want to summarize your data in form of tabular format using columns and rows in a very concise manner you can use pivot table you can also customize it using conditional formatting and change the color of individual cells for creating a pivot table you just go to the visual types and here uh, on the third row right hand side you got the pivot table so just select it to create a pivot table chart 
and here you would require to provide the name of the column rows and other parameters so here we can have a uh, different kind of charts when you are creating a dashboard you could add different charts such as pie map pivot table and much more you can create duplicate uh, of an individual chart in that case the field information would be intact so just click the feed wells and here you get options rows columns and values so in the rows we have country uh, we can add state information as well so it will first divide it into countries then categorize based on the states and then we have the third parameter that is values so here we got uh, profit we can change the aggregate function from sum to count to average to distinct mean median percentile standard deviation you got various options so based on your requirement you can find the minimum of a value maximum of a value count you by default people use sum in general case because we want to add the profit we want to add the sales we want to add the numbers if you want to find the average you can easily find then you can also add some more information like we have added tax from profit so it has created another column for that so here we got four columns country states profit and tax from profit states are categorized based on the country name so they are arranged in the country way so first uh, six seven states are from the same country like canada and then followed by all the states from usa we leave the column tab intact uh, if you want to drop some information here in your field here you can add but it will make things uh, look very complex and most of the cells would be empty uh, so it's better to reduce the amount of empty cells by just not using this option we want to have the concise view of the data so this pivot table will allow you to find the information like how much profit is generated from a state of manitoba or british columbia from canada or how much taxation you have to pay so this thing can be fetched this kind of information can be stored very easily using the pivot table this will be visualized so you don't need to dive into deeper you can find the insights very well you can go to the conditional formatting this will allow you to easily grab the things that are informative or relevant so here we want to customize some values or we want to highlight the values that are greater than 100 or greater than 1000 so here we will be using two different color options so we just go to this option condition values just select the greater than and we will choose 100 and change the color to something bright because we are using dark theme we choose to go with the orange color just hit apply and now you find this all the values that fall all the values in taxation that falls above 100 value it will be converted to orange color the cell is displayed as orange color you can add some more conditions like greater than thousand and this time you can change some more color you can add some more color so like for information uh, like uh, if you want to show some kpis kpis can also be summarized using uh, this pivot table so if you want to if you have a large chunk of data and you just want to focus on most important the highest sales or the most important factors from the data set you can just focus there say the states that are driving maximum sales your strategy should be built on those things so you can find you can also find alerts and this kind of information here if you have multiple information it's better to choose the between conditions where you define the starting value and the end value and let's change it to yellow color and then we have the second condition that is orange so above thousand it will be changed to dark orange color and below thousand but greater than hundred it is shown in yellow color so this is where we highlighted the important states our important information from our data set in the same way you can highlight the profit the country name anything that you want to define 
on this thing keep learning and keep moving ahead try to do this thing on your own welcome back friends now moving forward with conditional formatting in pivot table so let's start with this uh, in the same way we colored few cells in the taxation column uh, this way we can choose a different column and perform different color formatting earlier we choose yellow and orange color uh, this time we can take the color for green green color that can be used to show the top five or top gaining states okay so here we have information of states from us and canada and we can find the top five states that generated profit or more than five even based on a certain, certain condition so here we define the condition two conditions we're going to define first condition would be between thousand to triple uh, four nine nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine and second condition would be ten thousand and above I, uh, you can do this in either way first either you select this thing this is an inclusive set so it will include those values okay you may exclude it and here we select two ranges so we will take uh, the same color with different tone we will take the lighter green color and a darker green color so it will be visually more appealing okay you can find it here on various web consoles when you create analytics dashboard sometimes it would be very useful to have a colored highlighters so this way we highlighted certain values and we can easily find the top performing state and here ontario in canada is a top performer and we can easily find it so if you have a lot chunk of data and you want to summarize them uh, to find some top uh, performer or a bottom uh, performer or a losers you can easily find this kind of things so data science and data visualization not just about representing your data it is also about representing your data in a visually appealing way so in that way it would be creative appealing and it would just focus on the precise information that you want to convey it should not generate noise or information that is not useful so you are also summarizing your data and narrating your data to narrate your storytelling in the better way so this way you can create a dashboard pivot table and highlight things using conditional formatting try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about adding title and description on a visualization dashboard in aws quicksight so let's start with this you will also learn to create visuals for key performance indicators for creating a title just move ahead to top left corner of this dashboard just select add title you may also add description visual calculated field or parameters so just name this presentation or dashboard you can provide any name uh, let me provide some decent name here report insights because this is a report for a data set that we have prepared earlier and now we are creating visuals so we have created two different visuals here the pivot table and the map and we are going to name it so then you may also add some description like find critical sales information from data set so this is the purpose of our dashboard you may skip this step it is not compulsory but in case you are creating a pdf file and exporting it uh, for a reference I, it would be better for you to add some title because uh, if you are working on a serious project it is a part of your job then it would be better to name the dashboard don't keep them anonymous because uh, in that case you would be confused what kind of data it is okay so when you are creating a visual chart or either you are creating a report as a whole it would be better to keep the information as precise and concise as possible so you can just directly move towards the relevant information and avoid any kind of noise one of the best way to do this thing is to create kpis so kpi key performance indicators could be also considered as a visual information because they show the figure exact figure uh, the summary of the figure so here we have the 
sales information and it shows a summary or the sum of profit in the big numbers so you can just generate it you can add it to the chart say here we got uh, different informations uh, from different states of the U US and Canada and we can show them here so here uh, this is an inverted report and here we can add this thing so it would better just go to the visual types and select the field that you want to choose you can use different aggregation functions such as average sum here I'm going to use the sum so we have added this thing so here we decently added four different charts two are really really chart one is map one is a pivot table that we have applied conditional formatting and now we have these two KPIs downwards that will show you the precise information and here we have the title of this dashboard report and the description so it makes a complete uh, report on its own and you may save it and download it when you want so here this is how you do these things try to add different kinds of titles uh, create different charts on quick site to perform business intelligence analytics and data science stuff Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back, friends. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating a Sankey chart in AWS QuickSight. So let's start with this. So Sankey chart is a very powerful chart. It comes under the advanced chart category. Uh, it will allow you to represent flow of information or flow of data in the chart from one category to a different category. Uh, it is very easy to create a Sankey chart using QuickSight, although it would be very difficult to create a Sankey chart in software such as Tableau and Power BI as it is not available by default. One of the powerful instincts in QuickSight is that you get to create Sankey chart by default. So here we are going to create a two layer Sankey chart. Uh, you can create multi layer Sankey chart as well. Uh, so first drop few fields, uh, rows and dimensions here. Here we put country into the source and state into the destination. So here uh, on the left hand side we got two different countries, uh, United States and Canada. And here based on the weight that is profit, the uh, source is uh, getting connected to destination. And here in the destination we got state. So you can find which state generated maximum chunk of profit in a certain country. So, you know, the United States generated more profit than Canada here uh, in terms of revenue because the size of US is greater than Canada. And when you compare the number of states, US have more states than Canada. And within the state, you can find which state has the maximum weight of profit. And here on the top side, you got different number of states. So it is simple to identify the flow of information. Uh, various use, uh, use cases can be created using Sankey chart, such as flow of energy. Uh, you may create an information like uh, uh, the power generation sources from renewable and non-renewable, coal, thermal, wind, energy, and different solar, different sources on the left hand side. And on the right hand side you can find the consumption pattern so say if you generate electricity using wind where it goes so you can show the flow it may go to the household industries uh, e-vehicles electric vehicles and such on in the same way we can create some more Sankey chart here we create one more Sankey chart where we are using product category into the source. So here we have multiple categories such as food, technology, medicine, cosmetics and toys. And we have product names into the destination. So on the right hand side, we got the product names as a destination and you can add order quantity into the weight. So we are using these things from our data set. So you can find which food has a majority chunk of order quantity uh, into the food category and here we got this information you can flip some of the information say sometimes you can change or re replace order quantity with profit or other data values so you may rep uh, put uh, something called dimensions only in weight because weight is a numerical value 
uh, it will be useful only when you put numerical well numerical fields here so profit order quantity all have numbers and you can add only numerical values or dimensions into the weight category where source and destination could be numerical as well as alphabetic say if you drop serial number into the source it will add one two three four it will show them okay but it will be very long because it will take all the rows on itself it won't do some when you drop any dimension into the dimension values such as weight it automatically performs some aggregation such as summation it adds up the values so it will be very concise so here we have created two different Sankey charts to show the flow. Uh, in the US, you can find majority chunks go to on a single state. And when you replace uh, some information, replace profit with order quantity, you find although a few states generated more profit, but order quantity was mostly evenly distributed across different states. And uh, sometimes a uh, few states that have a more order quantity but generated less sales so you can find this kind of information very easily so Sankey chart would allow you to show so we can find the Texas is on the top here and when it, you discuss in terms of order quantity Virginia was on top so this is a different pattern in here you can find different kind of insight Sankey chart is very visually appealing it summarizes a lot of information and get connected with these things so if you try to represent the same information using bar or pie chart it would be a different way of presentation but this makes uh, it outstanding here so try to create your Sankey chart using the information that you have uh, using various chunk of data keep learning and keep moving ahead